please don't make the mistake of thinking the arts and sciences are at odds with one another. That is a recent, stupid and damaging idea. You don't have to be unscientific to make beautiful art to write beautiful things. If you need proof, Twain, Douglas Adams, Vonnegut, McEwan, Sagan, Shakespeare, Dickens for a start. Welcome to the channel, I'm Nikhil Reddy, and as I'm sure you've seen in books and movies and just in your general conversations, there seems to be a big disconnect between the sciences and the arts. Both sides seem to discount one another, and often disappointingly so, because I don't think they have to be separate. Instead, I think they're actually really complementary. Specifically, I want to focus today's conversation on the differences between science and philosophy, and how though we may view them as separate institutions and disciplines, they actually turn out to be fairly twinned. Look around on any college campus and I'm sure you will easily find students that are doubtful that philosophers have anything useful to say about science. They are aware that prominent scientists in the world have stated publicly that philosophy is irrelevant to science if not utterly worthless. And my question is why do college students so often treat philosophy as very distinct and subordinate to science? You don't need to be superstitious to be a poet. You don't need to hate GM technology to care about the beauty of the planet. You don't have to claim a soul to promote compassion. Furthermore, if you find engineering students, they may tell you that philosophers have no business weighing in on large scientific discussions. And if you find philosophy students, they may tell you that if you're an engineer or a scientist, you have no business weighing in on a large philosophical problem. And I think this is so problematic because if we look hard enough, we'll see that both disciplines actually very well complement one another. Science solves real world problems. It gives us technology, things that we can touch and see and use. It gives us vaccines, GMO crops, and painkillers. Philosophy, on the other hand, to a large variety of students, doesn't seem to have any tangibles to show. But on the contrary, there are tons of philosophical tangibles that we can pull from the greatest scientific minds. It was Albert Einstein's philosophical thought experiments that laid the groundwork for the most profound scientific theory of all time. It was Aristotle's logic that was the basis for computer computer science, which gave us laptops and smartphones and everything that we know today in the modern technological world. And it was philosophers work on the mind-body problem that set the stage for the emergence of neuropsychology and therefore brain imaging technology. It's very easy to see how philosophy has always been quietly at work in the background of the world's greatest scientific discoveries. Science is not a body of knowledge nor a belief system, it is just a term which describes humankind's incremental acquisition of understanding through observation. Science is awesome. The arts and sciences need to work together to improve how knowledge is communicated. Ultimately, I hope this video shows you that just because you're a scientist, it doesn't mean that you can't partake in good artistic endeavors, and just because you're a philosopher or an artist, it doesn't mean you can't engage in lively scientific discussions. And with that, I will leave you guys. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nikhil Reddy. I make videos like this all the time. If you enjoyed it, please let me know down below with a like, a comment, maybe a subscription to the channel. Last but certainly not least, though, I will always see you guys in the next one.